Hello, William, and great, great hello from Warsaw. How's it going? Good to good to talk to you. Hello from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I, I love Atlanta, Georgia. I have a good friend in there. I've never been there, but I've been close to that place. And my friend actually moved to California. I guess maybe it had to do with the weather after all. But I wanted to ask you about something that's not uh, very official, maybe, but I know quite a number of uh, people named William, and some of them have agreed for me to call them Bill. Are you one of them? Uh, I'm not. Uh, my dad is actually Bill. So if you call me Bill, I'll be looking around for my dad. Uh, I go by William, the full the full two and a half syllables. I but, get uh, that. I get that. So even though some people would consider uh, Bill like this less official form of William, to some other people, it might not be the same name, actually. Exactly. Of course, you could go with Will. A lot of my friends go with Will, which is another informal like variant of the name. So we can go with whichever one you prefer. You're uh, the founder of The Sketch Effect, and you've been into illustrating for so long. But I'd like to ask you one question, uh, and that has to do with the very beginning of it. Anna Butrim, who is one of uh, the hosts of this event, she is the host of the main stage, she actually started in a corporate environment, and somebody told her that the way she dealt with public presentations was just incredible. And I wonder if there was a person who told you that your drawings were so great? Yeah, so the sketch effect really began when I was working in a corporate desk job and I would draw and sketch yeah. as part of our team's meetings. And the people around me, my team members, they said, this is really cool. This is a really awesome thing you're bringing to our meetings. Maybe you should consider, um, you know, leaning into this. Yeah, it's a, a great story. And one more a piece of evidence is saying that, you know, sometimes people are your next uh, suggestion or your best advice when it comes to what you should do with your uh, what you should do with your life and i'm so glad it turned out so well uh, to you again i've heard that atlanta is rainy today and it's 2 p.m. if i'm not mistaken that's correct yeah it's a little wet outside it's about two o'clock p.m. we've had a lot of rainstorms so thankfully we have internet nothing's been taken down um, but, uh, but yeah it's not not too bad are Liam and Gracie at home? They are. They should be, and they should be napping right now. Um, I'll find out in a couple hours when I get when I get home and uh, step into my other job, which is dad. Sure. I, I hope it wasn't too personal of a question. That's again the power of social media, and I'm so glad to to have been able to find out about you. And I'm really looking forward to your presentation. Awesome. Looking forward to sharing. So it's a yes for me. Great. All right. Well, let's get going. So I do not have a presentation deck. Instead, today, I'm going to be showing my presentation in the form of a live sketch. And this is what our team does at the Sketch Effect. So I am in Atlanta, Georgia, but the visuals you see are provided by one of our team members, Len Peralta, who is in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, so the world of virtual events is incredible. I'm in Atlanta. Uh, many of the attendees are all over the world. I know the broadcast team is in Poland. Len is in Ohio. This is really exciting. So with that, we are going to jump in. And I will clarify that Len is creating this sketch in real time. Uh, this is not pre-planned out. Everything he is drawing or creating is entirely uh, organic and live. You're seeing it as it unfolds. So I want to start off my presentation with a question, which is, remember when? Do you remember when we could all meet in person? Starting to feel like a lifetime ago, but I know I can. Uh, I remember being in ballrooms in Las Vegas or fancy corporate offices in New York. Uh, we traveled internationally. I remember an event in uh, Panama City in a fancy hotel in Panama City. Um, we've been to Amsterdam and London. I remember all these fantastic events. I remember being there with friends, being there with colleagues, uh, learning new things. I remember the sights of these events, the smells of the events. I remember certain drinks I had or certain incredible food I had. Uh, I remember events that were by the ocean or by a fancy pool or up in the mountains at some resort. 
Um, one event that I specifically remember was a client event out in the uh, out in southern Texas, outside of San Antonio. Um, if you've never been to Texas, it's a fantastic part of the United States. This particular event was happening on a ranch. Uh, there was an armadillo race. There was real Texas barbecue being smoked in real time. There were big torches burning, uh, bonfires. There was line dancing. You could feel the Texas breeze blowing in, uh, and it was a really, really good time. So when I remember when, events like that come to mind. Obviously, the days are different. We're now living in the post-COVID world. So that was then, and this is now. We've pivoted to the world of virtual events, and I'm so grateful that we have the opportunity to take our events and do them virtually. However, with virtual events, when it comes to engaging the five senses, you really only have two dials that you can turn. There's really only two levers that you can pull. Audio, what people hear, and visual, what people see. Um, and so if you don't hear anything else from my presentation, hear this. Visuals are so incredibly critical to an effective virtual event. Why? Well, one, they're just an even greater component of these events. Before, like I mentioned that event out in Texas, all five of my senses were engaged. With virtual events, only two senses are engaged. So you really need to lean in to, uh, to the visual side of your virtual events. The other reason why visuals are so incredibly critical to a virtual event is that they are powerful. Visuals are just powerful, and this is science. There's data to back this up, and I'm gonna share with you in a few minutes. But before I do that, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. I already got a great introduction earlier, but my name is William or if you wanna go with Will, I'll accept that. Um, we, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called The Sketch Effect. Uh, we're based in Atlanta, Georgia, but like I mentioned, we have team members all over the country. Uh, Len is one of them. We've got other live artists that are part of our crew. And we are a visual communications company. And all that simply means is that we use visuals to help our clients communicate their ideas more effectively. Uh, we offer two primary services. Uh, one is uh, what we call sketch effect video, and it's essentially animation. So we have a, a crew of animators, artists, designers. We make motion graphics videos. We make whiteboard videos. We make uh, 2D animation. Uh, so that's really a lot of fun. Uh, our other main service is what we call sketch effect live. And I described the in-person events uh, at the beginning of this talk. Uh, Historically, with Sketch Effect Live, we travel to events, we travel to conferences and meetings, and while events are unfolding, while there's uh, content being discussed, presentations unfolding, uh, workshops taking place, we have a team of artists that would be there physically in these events with marker and paper and sketching out the ideas in real time. So it's really cool. Um, spoiler alert, we have pivoted and we are offering our sketching uh, service to virtual context, which Len is demonstrating right now, which is so exciting. Uh, and I'll tell a little bit more about that later. But first, I mentioned the power of visuals. So let's take a little bit of a mo let's take a little moment and talk about how powerful visuals are. And there's really four components. The first has to do with efficiency. Communicating using visuals is a more effective and efficient form of communication. It's simply faster. Um, and the data backs this up. 93% of communication is nonverbal. That's amazing. 93%. That means all the other forms of communication is 7%. So uh, that's pretty fast. Also, the brain, the human brain, processes visuals 60,000 times faster than text. Um, I can't even fathom how fast that is, but suffice to say, it's fast. It's really, really fast. And then also in terms of efficiency, uh, visual communication is a global language. And you know, with event like this, with Spark of Change, we have a global audience. Um, with visuals, there's fewer linguistic uh, barriers, there's fewer cultural barriers. Visuals, the visual language is a language that transcends most linguistic and cultural barriers. So it, it adds to efficiency in that sense. So that's the first thing. Uh, how visuals are so powerful has to do with efficiency. The second one has to do with comprehension, uh, with how people understand ideas. Um, I saw a data point that said that 83% of human learning occurs visually. 
83%. That's amazing. That means the other channels of human learning, which is verbal, auditory, and kinesthetic, those comprise only 17%. So in terms of comprehension, visual learning is most of it when it comes to understanding ideas. I read this fascinating study which showed that people who follow directions using illustrations and text, those people do 323% better than people who only uh, follow directions that are based on text. Again, that's incredible. Um, and if you're putting together an IKEA furniture, then your, your instructions are only illustration based, which I love. Um, you may have heard this, that the human attention span is shorter than a goldfish. Uh, well, it's true, it's about eight seconds. And so in terms of people getting information of them comprehending it, um, visuals is your best bet. So that's the second thing. Um, the third power of visuals is has to do with retention or how well people remember ideas. Um, uh, it's this. It's simply true that we remember better. Remember, we remember things we see better than things we hear. For instance, I'm sure all of us can remember faces, but we have a hard time with names. And again, that's backed up by the science. Um, a couple of bits of data is that people remember 10% of what they hear, 20% of what they read, but 80% of what they see and do. It's unbelievable. Also, retention after a meeting, retention after a meeting is six times greater when information is presented verbally and visually compared to when it's only presented verbally. That's amazing. So if you're having a meeting like this one and you want people to remember it, then adding visuals to the content will increase their retention six times. Unbelievable. So we talked about efficiency. We talked about comprehension. We talked about retention. The last power of visuals has to do with shareability. Shareability, and it's simply true that visuals are just more fun to share. It's just more fun to text an image or send out a animated GIF or post a meme on somebody's uh, you know, Facebook wall. Um, visuals are just more fun to share. Um, and again, the data backs this up. Images are by far the most shared form of content online. It's unbelievable. All other forms of content get blown out of the water by pictures and images. Um, and all of the fastest channels of social media, all the fastest growing channels of social media, uh, you know, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, et cetera, all of those are visual. So visuals, visuals based platforms are the fastest growing. And it's just a testament to the fact that visuals are fun to share. So that's the power of visuals. Why are we talking about science? Why am I sharing all this data with you? Well, again, it's simply this, which is that if you're hosting virtual events, you need to dial up the visuals. You need to leverage visuals for your virtual events. And so right now, I'd like to take a quick minute and just share four ways, four easy ways that you can leverage visuals for your events. Um, the first one is really not a tactic, and it's more of just a encouragement, which is that you need to be investing in quality visuals. You need to be investing in quality visuals. I'm talking budget. You need to be putting budget towards visuals. Um, let me be clear about this. If you were to host an in-person event, you can't take your in-person event plan, slash the budget by 80%, put it online and expect it to be as good as uh, people expect it to be. You can't just slash the budget down. Now, obviously, virtual events are a little bit more affordable to put on, but you can't skimp on the budget when it comes to the visuals. So invest in quality slides, invest in quality cameras and lighting, invest in animation, invest in really great bumper you know, videos, um, things like that. So invest in the quality, invest in more quality visuals. Um, num idea number two is to use a robust meeting platform. Uh, you're looking at one right now. This is an awesome meeting platform. I mean, I'm watching myself on here. I see lens sketch in real time. I see graphics at the bottom with my name on it. Um, you know, we can have multiple windows up at the same time. Uh, using a robust meeting platform is a really great way to uh, easily increase the visual appeal of your virtual event because there's more to look at. People can you know, direct their eyeballs to whatever different part of the event they want to watch, and it will make, uh, it will make the event more uh, successful. 
Um, idea number three, which is kind of a fun one, which is I always encourage people when it's appropriate to encourage their audience to doodle on their own. Now, this might be better for a more small group in a small group event where it's more collaborative, like a working session or brainstorming session. But we always encourage uh, people to pick up their own markers or their own iPads and to doodle as well. Um, it's a way to, again, to engage the element of visual learning and to make it more fun. Um, and then finally, the fourth way to leverage visuals for virtual events which of course is our personal favorite, is to include a live sketch artist. Um, now you've seen Len doing his sketching now, and again, this is all in real time, which is so cool. Um, but we encourage you to, to include a live sketch artist. Now, I'll, let me describe how live sketching works, and I'll talk about it pre-COVID, and then I'll talk about after COVID or in terms of virtual events. So pre-COVID, uh, we would travel to events, like I mentioned earlier, all over the world primarily in the US, but we've worked in Amsterdam, we've worked in London, uh, Panama, Vancouver, Canada, uh, all over the world. We would travel to these events, hop on a plane, bring our markers, set up a canvas in the room. And again, while there's presentations being discussed, while things are unfolding, the artist is actively listening, capturing it in real time. Um, and, uh, you know, we saw a lot of success with this for seven years. We kept busy. We did over 200 virtual events in 2019. Um, and then obviously in 2020, the world changed overnight. Uh, COVID hit and all of a sudden we moved to virtual events. And thankfully at the Sketch Effect, we were able to make a quick pivot and adapt our service to a virtual context. So instead of doing it with markers on paper in a ballroom, we were now doing it on an iPad using a sketching program and streaming it to awesome platforms like this one. Um, and it took a couple of weeks for people to really kind of wrap their mind around this idea. Obviously virtual events were new to most of us last, uh, last spring um, and last winter, but uh, over time, this idea has really snowballed and we had our busiest quarter ever last year. We're having an incredibly busy January. We have six virtual events that we're participating in today, six today, and that's just in one day. Um, so we love virtual events. We love sketching at virtual events. And I'm going to leave you with four wins of live sketching at virtual events. Four ways that your event can win by leveraging virtual live sketching. And then we'll wrap up and take some questions. So the first uh, win with virtual sketching is it's a really easy way to increase engagement. Um, so here's a big pain point with virtual meetings, which is that distraction is a click away. Uh, you are literally, with your virtual event, you are literally competing with a zillion other shiny, distracting things on the internet. Um, it takes just one click for someone to click off of your virtual event and go check Facebook or check Twitter or check their favorite blog or check their email or check their text or check whatever is maybe more interesting than your virtual event. So with virtual events, distraction is a click away. Having a live sketch artist is a really fantastic way to increase engagement keep people's eyeballs locked onto the screen, mesmerize an audience, and keep them engaged. Uh, there's something really exciting about watching an artist work live, and so we channel that uh, magic to, uh, to virtual events to increase engagement. So that's number one, increase engagement. The second win with live sketching is that it increases alignment. Um, this is especially true for smaller meetings uh, where maybe it's a smaller group, or you're problem solving, or you're working through a big challenge. But here's the thing, in-person meetings are already hard to get alignment um, in. It's already hard to get people on the same page in person. It's even harder when there is a screen in the way. Um, so with virtual live sketching, your audience is literally on the same page. They're literally seeing the ideas sketched out in real time. They're seeing their comments captured. They're seeing uh, the ground covered and it gets people on the same page. It also cuts down on misunderstandings, uh, uh, people mishearing each other. So if they see their, their words visualized, then there's gonna be fewer misunderstandings. People are going to be on the same page um, and that alignment will increase. So that's the second win with virtual live sketching for virtual events is it increases alignment. So win number three is a really good one. Um, virtual live sketching adds a wow factor. Um, it adds a cool factor to virtual events. 
I remember back in March in Atlanta when we started to lock down and uh, virtual events and Zooms and video conferences, they were kind of new and they were kind of a novelty. Um, they were kind of a little bit fun, a little bit interesting, a little bit different. Well, we're almost a year into this and uh, I'm sure we can all agree that we are oversaturated with virtual events. Um, we're oversaturated with them. So in order for your virtual event, you need to make it wow. You need to make it cool. You need to differentiate. So like I said, using a platform like this one um, with this incredible team here is a great option. There's a lot of ways to add that wow factor and add a differentiation. Virtual live sketching is a really easy way to add that wow factor. Um, a lot of people have not seen this yet. Uh, it's becoming more and more popular, which is great. Um, but it's still kind of new. Uh, it's still uh, something that people will really go wow when they watch it. Um, so if you want to add a differentiation to your event, give something, give people something that, to talk about, this is a really great way. So our fourth and final point uh, before we wrap up uh, with uh, the, four, the fourth win with live sketching uh, for virtual events, uh, we talked about engagement, we talked about alignment, we talked about the wow factor. Finally, with virtual live sketching, you get incredible follow-up opportunity. So after this event's done, Len is going to save this sketch as a JPEG. He also has the option to save it as a video time lapse. And then we provide that to our clients immediately after the event ends. Now, if you remember with live events, when your event ends, people might mingle in the lobby. They might hang out in the hallway. Maybe they're going to go to a happy hour. Maybe they're going to hop in a cab, share a cab ride to the airport. They're going to fly home. They're going to think about the event. They're going to talk about it for hours after the live event ends. Now with virtual live events, once the event ends and people click the little button to close out, they're done. The engagement stops and uh, oftentimes you lose them. So having, an, having effective follow-up is incredibly critical. You need to send them follow-up to keep the engagement going, to keep people revisiting the ideas, sharing the ideas. Um, and these sketches are a great way to do that. Now, sending the slide deck is good. Sending notes is good. Sending the video recording is good. But I would argue it's not enough, uh, especially for busy professionals. Busy professionals need content they can digest quickly. They can revisit quickly. They can share quickly. And these sketches will do just that. I mean, it will take maybe a minute tops to read through these sketches. And that's really all you need to keep that engagement going. It'll help people re-engage re in the meeting, revisit their ideas, um, and uh, share with others. So that's really it. Um, you know, we love virtual events. I am so grateful that we can do events virtually. If not, we'd be out of business. A lot of us would be out of business. Um, but you can't just take your live event and slash the budget and put it on a, in, on a, online. You have to invest in it. You have to be intentional about it. And I'll close with this. Remember, with virtual events, you have two main dials that you can turn to engage people's senses, audio and visual. So crank up the visual dial, invest in awesome visuals for your events, and you'll be on your way to hosting the best virtual events possible. So that's all I've got. I know we got a little bit of time for questions. And um, we do. I just love what Len, Len's doing. This is awesome. So he cool. Is. Sometimes I go into presenter yeah. mode and then I take a step back and look at the sketch and I'm amazed. Uh, and I wanted to give a big shout out to Lynn Peralta <laughs> from the sketch effect. It is really impressive to see all the hard work. And you know, actually when I'm watching that and I've been for the last 15 minutes or so, I've been wondering about the job that you guys have because it seems as though it's very close to the job of an interpreter where you've got to be focused all the time. And it seems like your brain is working 110%. Exactly. We oftentimes will consider ourselves visual interpreters. We're taking spoken language and interpreting it, translating it into visual language. And like I said, visual learning, visual language is extremely powerful. Uh, it's the most powerful channel of human learning, like I described. Uh, and so we are providing that connection. We're providing that, that element of visual learning for events. So, Will, so has it just been uh, ups 
and no downs when it comes to the last 12 months? Because it seems like your transition has been really fluent and really easy, but maybe uh, that's just what it looks like from the outside. Yeah, so the spring and the summer were really, really, really rough because uh, at least in the States, a lot of our clients were really worried about um, the economic landscape. They're really worried about what was happening. They tightened up their budgets a lot. Um, and so we were working virtual events in the spring and summer, but they were um, there weren't a lot of them. And there were some, um, but they have slowly grown. And then around Q3 and Q4 of last year, we we found that uh, people's appetites for investing in their events, investing in their communication, were coming back. So and, and we did have a great Q3 and a great Q4. I'm sure for that, and I and I and I keep my fingers crossed. Uh, but I also wanted to say that it might have to do with people finding out that you know the pandemic won't be over anytime soon, and that's when they start to readjust their thinking. Before I ask you one more question, I just wanted to tell our audience that multivisual, actually visual is again a keyword, is a group of wonderful performance uh, of performers who are just starting uh, their appearance on the technology stage. They are the winners of the fifth edition of the Polish version of Poland's Got Talent. So America's Got Talent, Britain's Got Talent, and then eventually, obviously, Poland's Got Talent too. So fifth season is when they won, and you can simply just uh, check out what they are up to right now. There's a lot of visual, there's a lot of acrobatics, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. So uh, this could also be a very compelling thing for your event. And this actually connects itself very well to what uh, William has been saying because you say hey if you have uh, just uh, managed uh, to uh, spend less money on the event because no longer do you have to uh, to uh, rent that huge uh, room in a hotel no longer do you have to pay for travel and accommodation then you might want to actually spend some money on quality uh, content and and to just give one example that's a visual that's also audio and i hope that with uh, our meetings like this one like spark of change people will have the awareness that it actually matters right that's awesome yeah absolutely it really matters and uh i i applaud you all for hosting this great event uh evangelizing around virtual events how we can all make them better um, because like you said, they're not, they're not going away. Hopefully one day we can land somewhere in the middle where we can offer incredible live and virtual and hybrid event solutions. Um, but this is great. Do we have, how much more time do we have? Are we, do we have any other questions or? This amount. We're good. Very yeah. good. Well, thanks so much. If anyone wants to connect with me, I'm on Instagram at William C. Warren. Uh, that's William C. Warren on Instagram. And if you want right. to learn about the sketch effect, you can find us online at the sketch effect.com. And you know what? One more thing we can actually do for all of you guys and for our viewers is that we will show your work full screen. And so again, that's by Len Peralta from the sketch effect. Uh, that's great. Uh, that really shows how important that is. The power of visuals, uh, really visualized. And so again, uh, this makes it all the more compelling. And I hope that people will be able to uh, spread the good word. And I also hope that your social media will have that too. So that, for example, myself, I will be able to share it to my Instagram story, for example. How about that? Absolutely. Yeah, I forgot to mention that Len will polish this sketch for about another 10 minutes or so, clean it even up. Even though it, it looks great. polished. We'll, it looks great now. We're gonna add even more. It's gonna look even sharper than it does. Uh, and we'll make that available to uh, to the team at Spark of Change. And then hopefully you can all share it out with all the attendees. Um, but this was a lot of fun. I appreciate the opportunity, opportunity to share. And uh, um, again, thanks for hosting such a great event. Thank you, Will. And I hope that you stay tuned because really this event is not over and it would be so great to have you involved in the conversation that's going on because I see so many people have been interested in your presentation. So I feel like some of these questions really need an answer. I hope that you're able to be logged in into our platform. Sure. Yeah. So thank you very much and have a great day in Atlanta, Georgia. You too. Yeah. Bye.